welcome back to my channel. I'm Zoe and I've been asked so many questions about my stays in Antigua and Barbuda. So I thought I'd answer some of the questions that you've been asking me. The first one is, what language is it? Well, it's English, so it's very easy. Now, sometimes the locals will have a dialect that you may not quite understand, but everybody speaks English. So there's no issue there. Driving, you drive on the left hand side. So for us British people, it's dead easy. If you drive on the other side, of course, you're gonna to have to get used to that, but it's not difficult. Driving around can be a little bit challenging in that there's a lot of potholes in places, but once you get used to it, you get used to where they are and you kind of maneuver around them and it's not that difficult. You'll also get people honking their horns at you all the time and you're first you'll think, oh no, what have I done? Am I going the wrong way? What usually happens is if you're driving along and someone is honking behind you, they're not telling you to hurry up. They're warning you that they're going to overtake. So they're just warning you so you don't pull out. So just stay in your lane, let them go. It's not an issue. The other thing I find, which is great about driving in Antigua, is that in the UK, everybody just, nobody knows anybody out here. If you're trying to get out, somebody will just toot at you, let you go. And it's usual here to just make your way. Nobody's gonna get annoyed that you cut across, across them. It's expected, you're just gonna go. It's very chilled out here. Never seen any road rage here. It's brilliant. Another question I get asked is safety. I travel here as a solo female, and do I feel safe? The answer is 100% yes. I've never felt unsafe here. And I do everything on my own. And I drive myself around, and I walk around, I go hiking on my own, I go to the shops, to St John's, and I've never ever felt unsafe here. Now I'm not saying that there isn't crime here, there, there's, all, there's crime everywhere. And I'm sure, you know, I, I take the usual precautions, like I keep my belongings close to me, I always wear my bag over my shoulder, I do that anyway. And, you know, I don't go drinking on my own late at night in sketchy areas. And I've just never had any trouble here. One of the common things you'll get, like if you're sitting on the beach, is you'll get people coming up to you and they're, you know, they're trying to chat to you and... Just be friendly, there's no need to be rude to anyone, nobody's going to harm you, so they're just, they're just being local and it's just not an issue. Um, people ask me what is snorkeling and swimming like here? Well, fantastic, the sea here is, in most places, very calm. So Pigeon Point Beach is perfect for families. It's got a park on the side and the water is very calm. Uh, Galleon Beach is very calm too. There's not very strong currents there, so you can just swim very easily. And uh, actually at Pigeon Point, they do have an area section, but people swim more along there and there's, there's not any issue. Snorkeling, snorkeling's very good here. Um, most beaches, it's worth having a look at. Sometimes, you know, if there's been a storm, the visibility won't be great. But when the water's clear, you'll see so many fish. And if you're lucky, you'll see stingrays and turtles. You, know, you don't need to pay for a tour. Just get your snorkel on, go and have a look. Usual precautions, don't go too far out and you know, make sure you're competent. But it's perfectly safe. Another common question I get is, can I get here supplies that I, you know, would get at home, like shampoo and hair conditioner? And the answer is yes, you can get everything here. Now you might not get your brand, but you'll get something here. If you want major brands and you need to go into one of the bigger supermarkets and they have a bigger range, but everything you need, you can get here nail polish, you can get your hair cut, you can have a massage. It's, it's just like being at home. Maybe the brands are a bit different. And the way of 
shopping may be slightly different. Like you might want an iceberg and then realise that costs you ten times what it does at home. So instead of getting an iceberg lettuce, you'll get the local lettuce. And it's still more expensive than you pay at home, but you know, it's you, you just get used to it and you just manage and you and you won't you won't go with that. Did I need a visa to come to Antigua and Barbuda? I'm a British citizen and no, I didn't. I got a third, sorry, I got a 90 day stamp when I arrived. Um, so I can stay here visa free for 90 days and then I have to leave. Um, I'm not an expert on the visa side. It does seem rather complicated and quite difficult to get a visa to live here permanently. Uh, most of it is if you want to invest a lot of money. So, um, if you know this, this isn't the place to come and get a cheap visa. You'll be looking more at Asia, I guess. But um, the only other option here is if you're a digital nomad. Um, there are a two-year visa available for digital nomads here, and that's been quite popular. Oh, and a similar, similar sort of question is um, how easy is it to get a flight? to Antigua and Barbuda. There, direct, there are direct flights uh, from Heathrow to Antigua with Virgin. I think they're three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Not 100% sure, it's three or four times uh, a week. Or there's daily flights from Gatwick with British Airways and they come direct. If you're in the States, I believe you can get to New York direct, um, maybe a couple of other states, um, but I'm not from the US, so I'm not 100% sure there. But I know there's a direct one to New York. What's the weather like? Hot. It's tropical. It's the Caribbean. I've, I'm here January to March this year. Um, so it's it's about 50% humid all the time. It's not like the summer when you come, our oh, summer when you come here and it's, it's much more humid. So it's more of a dry, it's more of a drier heat, so it's bearable. Um, but when I was here this year, there was one week where it was really hot and there was no breeze and it did get quite tough, like moving around. But then a big storm came and then it went back to normal. And the storm was pretty spectacular. It did go on for two days and we were told to stay put because there were flood warnings. But thankfully, you know, everything was safe and nobody was hurt. Um, but in general, it's sunny, odd shower, usually in the mornings or in the evenings. <clears throat> and it's, it's beautiful, it's, it's beach weather. And, it, and, it, and it's good weather for going, you know, walking around it. Personally, I tend to do my hikes early in the morning before it gets too warm and before the sun's right up. <clears throat> but that's my, you know, my choice. Is I, I prefer to do it then before it gets hotter as the day goes on. But I know people do hike throughout the day in these months and they're fine. Can you drink the tap water? No. Now, Apparently the t water that comes out of the tap is actually okay and safe to drink. But what we've all been advised here is that the pipeworks have not yet been updated, not fully throughout the island. So the pipes may have dirt in them. And so we're told to drink bottled water and even use it for cooking. I mean, I'm not actually that fussed and I would use tap water for cooking and boiling the kettle. But if you're very funny about that, bottled water and you can buy big gallons of of it and there's actually if you're in English Harbour up by Jenny's supermarket there's a dispenser where you can refill them which is going to save you even more money. What is the food like? It's fantastic. It's so fresh and it doesn't have to be spicy but if you want spicy you can get spicy food here. But I have to say, I've eaten out in a lot of places here and I've never had a bad meal. I have some favourite restaurants. So in English Harbour, my favourite one is Trackers. They've got 
a good range on the menu and you get such good value for money. The, the portions are huge. Um, my other favourite would be uh, Beach Bombs on Half Moon Bay. They do the best lobster. It's just fantastic and it would cost me about £30 for lobster and sides. They also do the most amazing spicy wings. These wings are huge and they're so spicy. My lips are on fire for days, but that's great. And my other favourite one is Gina's down at Morris Bay. She, uh, she has like a little grill outside, so it's all freshly grilled for you. And uh, she does your grilled chicken and all the sides. Very reasonable, very rustic. They're on the beach. Um, she's, she's really good, so that's worth trying. So they're my favourite three, but I've never had a bad, bad meal here. Um, you can get things like Mexican food, uh, pizza, chicken and chips. Um, in English Harbour there's a new Thai restaurant, there's also an Indian, uh, and there's a French, there's an Italian, so you don't have to just eat Caribbean food. I choose to because I love it. Um, but, you know, there's lots of other options as well. And then if you go into St John's, there's a whole range of options. Um, so, you, you, you know, you're really not going to eat badly here. And um, I don't think you'd find a bad restaurant. I've been asked about accommodation. I have done another video um, that's more about the cost of living here. And I did quite a bit on accommodation. So you've got quite a few options here. So you've got your resorts um, and a lot of them being all inclusive as well. That's very popular, especially I suppose if you've got families. I mean, when I was, you know, my kids were young, we did it all inclusive quite a bit because it just makes life easier and the, you know, the kids find people to play with and you get some peace and quiet and, uh, you know, they can have as much ice cream as they want. So there's you know, there's that option, and there's some very beautiful ones here in Antigua. There's lots of self-catering accommodation as well. So Jolly Harbour is mainly self-catering. Um, there's lots of places here in English Harbour. There's lots of places up around Dickinson's Bay. Um, you've got uh, then a choice of whether you have an apartment, um, a, you know, a flat. A, you don't get high rise blocks here but you know you, you get apartments and masonettes. Um, I know a few people that stay in more hostel accommodation here so there's one just across the road from me on, on top of Budget Marine and that's like a hostel accommodation and then it's got kitchen areas out the front on the balcony um, so that, that's an option as well. A lot of sailing people use that as well and uh, then you've got hotels and there's plenty of hotels all across the island. So there's no shortage of accommodation depending um, you know, what, you, what your preference is. Gyms, gyms. Someone asked me if there was gyms on the island. So English Harbour, there is a gym called Energy and I believe it's about, a, no, it was more than 100 EC. It worked out about £60, so that's what, $75 a month for a membership there. Um, they also have a yoga, a yoga studio. There was another gym in English Harbour on the old pier, but whether you know or not, that burnt down in a storm last year, and so that gym hasn't been rebuilt yet. I'm not sure if they're rebuilding it. I have, I've been down there and I haven't seen you know, space for it yet, but hopefully that'll come back. That was a nice gym because it had the breeze going through it. There's a few gyms in St John's and there's lots of little gyms that you'll pass and you'll see sort of around the island. Um, so there's no shortage of gyms here if that's your thing. What's the hiking like? Okay, so you all know I like to go on my morning walks and, and do my hikes. So I'm not a hiker, I would say I'm more a walker. 
um, but they're, they're very interesting and um, the ones I've done I've really enjoyed because you get usually very good views um, the scenery is just dramatic but I also like them because they tend to take you on a bit of a history trail and you can get to see some history along the way now you can also hike up to Mount Obama which is the biggest mountain here or hill here but I haven't done that yet I'll work my way up to that maybe next year but there's lots here and you can find the tracks online um, or and actually Google Map has quite a few of them on if you kind of know the direction you're going you can follow them on there but there's there's so many of them here to do and uh, there's a, also, if you do the, the one between English Harbour Beach, Pigeon Point Beach, up to Nelson's Dockyard, the, the one called Middle Trail, they also call it the Goat Track. Um, so you can expect to share the track with the goats. Having said that, I've shared the track with goats on many of the hikes around this, this area. So, um, yeah, you, you're never on your own. Okay, yes, yeah, so, would I consider living on a different Caribbean island? Okay, so this is an interesting question, because when I decided I wanted to come and live in the Caribbean for the winter, I actually made a long list of all the Caribbean islands, and then alongside that I made what was my criteria, and then I could tick off ones that matched them. So, for me, it was because I was going to be here long term, English speaking was quite important to me. Um, so that knocked a few of them off. Um, safety was another big thing for me. And, uh, you know, being able to live comfortably and, you know, actually be able to live and feel, you know, feel safe. They, that, they were the biggest criteria for me. And I narrowed the list down. I was actually left with two islands, it was uh, Antigua and Barbuda or uh, Tobago and I had been to both before and actually both were very beautiful and both very stunning and you know it, it was a tough decision and the reason I chose Antigua was because it was slightly bigger than uh, Tobago so it had a little bit more to to see and a little bit more to do. Um, as much as I think Tobago is one of the most beautiful places in the world and it, and it is, you know, it has the most beautiful beaches and it has a lovely main town. It is a lot smaller than here. And for that reason, I went with Antigua and I don't regret it and I would not pick another island. But that's my personal choice. I'm sure other people like the other islands for other reasons. Oh, would I retire here permanently? I would consider it. Um, I still have a lot of travelling to do. So, as you know, I am going to be embarking on full-time travel as soon as I've sold my house. Um, you know, and hopefully I do find somewhere I want to settle down um, because I don't think it's ever going to be the UK. And uh, I do love it here and... You know, it is a possibility. The problem with retiring here is getting a visa. I'm not keen on going with the investment visa, so you can get citizenship via investment, but it's quite a lot of money to have to put down. Um, and not everybody has that kind of money. Um, digital nomad visa, I could, you know, apply for that for two years, but that only gives me two years and they're not renewable. Um, and at this time, actually, I don't want to be tied to one country. I want to embark on full-time travel. Then, other than that, it's really quite complicated and difficult to get a residency or a visa to stay here permanently, unless I got married. Um, I'm not planning on that. So... Uh, I would I like to I would like it to remain on my list of potential retirement places. Would it happen? 
we'd have to see the residency rules change, I think, for that to become a possibility for me. Or I win the lottery so I can afford to do the citizenship by investment. That's the other one. Okay, I think that's all the questions that I've had from you. And I do appreciate the questions that you sent me on here and through my social media. And I hope I've answered everything for you. Obviously, if you have more questions, please put them in the comments. I can always do another Q&A if I've missed things out. But thank you again for watching and for your support. And I hope to see you all soon. Thanks again. Ciao.